Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing Dead Reckoning, designed by John D. Clare and published by AEG. This is a fully sleeved, fully upgraded copy of the game that includes all expansion content and is organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible. We utilize the core box here to store all of your non-Saga expansion content with no lid lift, but when you do want to play with that Saga expansion content, we incorporate one of the Saga boxes. This is going to contain both of the current Saga expansions, and when you're ready to, you can incorporate them into your core box organizer, as we'll talk about in the future. If you have any questions about anything you see in the video, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking for any of the materials that we use to organize or protect our game, please take a look in the description of the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. Let's get started organizing Dead Reckoning. First off, we lift the lid here, and inside you'll see that we have the rulebooks draped on top. We have the solo rulebook as well as your core game rules. On the inside of your lid for the box, you're actually going to have a reference on how to organize and store your components. We use a lot of the ideas from this in our organization system with some small modifications. So this is a great reference that you can use to help you organize and put away your game. On the right side of the box here, we have the Sea Dogs expansion. This is going to be a small box that you'll open when you've played the base game a couple of times or you're ready for some asymmetrical abilities. So the way this works is you're going to draft some of these cards at the start of your game and then have some new effects and abilities for all of your different characters. So you'll keep this in that small box and you'll use it when you're ready. On the left side here, you'll have the bottom of the battle board. You'll be using this when you're taking your battle board to go. What do I mean by this? If you have the Kickstarter edition of the game, you'll have an additional battleship and battle board that you'll be able to leave set up and out so that it's much easier to get gameplay started. Now you can leave this at your home residence and that way when you're ready to play some Dead Reckoning at your place, it's easy to pull out. But there's a second ship that's actually stored inside of the box and you'll only need to bring it out if you're on the go with it. And that's what that second battle board is for so that way you can bring it portably, but you'll also have this second one that's available when you're gaming at home. Underneath the battle board, you'll have the harbor board. This is going to have a space to put all of your harbor goods as well as dock your ships. And then you'll also have all of your achievements that you're racing for listed at the top there. Underneath your harbor board, you'll have your ocean tiles. And we have four special ones here. These are the open ocean tiles. You'll only use two of these in your smaller player account games, two and then two and three. But the other two you'll always use. So make sure you keep them separate because you will have to use them. The other ocean tiles are all of your city tiles, and you'll randomly pick those and populate the board with them face down in conjunction with all of your open ocean tiles. So make sure that you have those shuffled and then separate them appropriately. To the right of the ocean boards, you'll have all of your ship boards, and you'll give this to the player based on the color that they pick for the game. So you'll just hand one of those to each player. On this top section, you'll have all of your references for your upgrade paths. This explains each of the different characters and what happens when they level up. You'll have them double-sided, and we actually have them in protectors here. The protectors we use for these awkwardly shaped cards are the horizontal booklet one-touch resealable bags from Ultra Pro. I really like the way these works. You can cinch them so they fit any size card sleeve, no matter what, and then you use a paper cutter to trim the edges or a pair of scissors. So you'll need four of these, but I'll leave a link in the description once again for anything I talk about in this video. And now we're on to the bottom of the box. Let's start off with these large circular harbor tiles. These can be used to put in front of each player so that way they don't have to store their goods on the actual harbor board, but they can differentiate if they're on the boat or if they're on the harbor. This just makes it so you're not having to reach across the entire table to store your goods. To the left of that, we have all of our basic and upgraded ship tiles denoted by their bags here. Go ahead and put these in appropriate stacks and match them by the symbol. Put like kinds next to each other. To the right of the ship upgrades, you'll have these bonus achievement tokens. You'll use these if you want to get a little bit of direction at the start of your game. So you'll give two of these each player and have them pick one. And that brings us to all the boxes on the bottom here. On the right side, we have the walls for your battle board, if you aren't using the one that you set aside earlier. And in this large box, you're actually going to store your second pirate ship. So if you are playing this game on the go, you just lift that top off, and inside you'll see that you have this large pirate ship inside. So you just pull that out, and boom, you're ready to go. And you can use whichever one that you prefer. I prefer the overall aesthetic of the colored ship, but you can definitely choose the one that you prefer. We've got some silica gel packets in here for freshness. And then we move on to our player treasure chests. Now in each of these chests, you're going to have a couple of items. And I'll just dump out one here to show you. The first thing that you're going to have is your pirate ship. And you want to make sure that you always put this in first because it is the largest component and everything else will fill in around it. Underneath that, you'll have all of your player cubes. These are for a variety of things, including combat. And then you have your token that's going to be used to determine if you're going to be in pirate mode or not. 
The way the pirate mode flag works is you actually put it in as a third mast of your ship. And this is just to signify that you are ready for combat if anybody enters your space. So I really like the way this works and it's a very clear indicator that you are in pirate mode. Black flags up, beware. In addition to your player cubes, you're also gonna have your achievement markers for all those different goals you're going for, and then 15 starting doubloons. That'll be repeated for all four different player colors, so just make sure that you give those to the player based on which color they decide to be. These next boxes here are all for your advancements, and they're denoted by these little dashes here. Each of the dashes determines how far away they are and how much their prices are, as well as their relative strength. So you put those on the board appropriately, but when you store them, make sure that you put the plastic side down here so you're not really sure what is actually coming up. So this merchant ship is actually coming up next, but since it's on this side, you're not sure. If we had flipped it the other way, then that art would be visible. So make sure that those clear plastic sides are face up, and that way everything remains a secret to all players. And you'll have that for all of your different boxes, once again denoted by those slashes here. And when you're storing them for the first time, you'll find those slashes in the upper right corner of the cards. So this is the level three, put all the level threes in this one. In this upper left section, we have all of the player cards for the game. You'll open up this box like so, and inside you'll see, denoted by the different sleeve backs, you'll have all of your different colored decks. So all four of those colors, and then we also have some clear reference cards down here. For the double-sided tarot size cards that are not part of the card crafting system, we use the clear tarot board game sleeves from Arcane Tin Mint. Before we continue, I do want to mention that you're going to need to assemble these cards before you start your first game. Now, the way they work is they're made of three parts, the sleeve themselves, as well as this upgrade card that you're going to be moving and flipping as you play the game. So level one, level two, and then you'll flip it into level three and then level four, based on whatever card that you choose to level up. And the captain itself will go on top of that, showing what the effect is currently, as well as, if it's a lower level, what its next level up will be. So it's got a great way and a great system of leveling up those cards, and then the color is indicated here as to which player it belongs to. The last set of cards here is all your solo cards, and we just have this in a simple plastic bag here, and these are the base game sleeves that you can use, and the way that these work is you just shuffle them up and you choose how many of these cards are going to be on their blue side or their red side based on the difficulty that you want to play. So I do like using this system because you're not sure exactly what's coming up, a hard or an easy version of the card, so I do like having these cards in these base game sleeves so you can't tell what the backs are. So you'll simply sleeve all of these up and then they're ready to go. And these last three boxes in the corner here are all of your resources. First off, we have all your realistic barrel resources. Now you can actually store your other barrels in here, but I do think that the entire art style and aesthetic of the two are pretty clashing, so I've gone ahead and kept them separate. But there is room to store all of the barrels in one bin, but you will have to move those crates into one of the other boxes to do so. In this next box here, we have all of the coins for the game. Simply lift that lid off. And a cool thing about these trays is... You can simply pour them into two different trays here and put them on opposite sides of the table so there's less reaching around. Really like these boxes. And our last box is going to hold a variety of tokens, including your fire, your black combat tokens, and all of the different buildings that can be built onto those islands that you control. So those will all just go in here and place them near that center of the board. And that's everything inside of the box here. Let's go ahead and pack it up. First off, we'll place all of our resource containers in this bottom left corner. We'll then put all of our player components in this upper right corner here followed by our battleship in its own little box, all of our advancement and solo cards, all of our player cards, our ship upgrades and our harbor tiles, our bonus achievement tokens and all of our walls for our battle board, our reference cards and our ship boards, our ocean tiles, and then our special ocean tiles that are all of your two and three player open ocean and our standard open oceans, our harbor board, our Sea Dogs expansion, some silica gel packets for freshness, and lastly, our battle board. Our two rule books on top, and that's everything for the non-Saga version of Dead Reckoning. Now quickly, let's go ahead and talk about what's in the Saga expansion box. We've stored both of the Saga expansions into a single box, and I'm not gonna get into anything here or spoilers or anything like that, but give you a general idea of what's inside. We've got our rule book here on top, as well as our encounter book for the game and our special tile. Once again, no spoilers here, I'll keep it face down for you. We also have all of our extra sleeves stored here from our core game. This is gonna be a little bit for each player color if they do get damaged, as well as all of your generic sleeves in there. So it's everything in this extra pack, you just put that in that upper section. We then have all of your components for that Saga 1 expansion. Once again, I'm not gonna really get into any of these. 
The most important thing is this cardboard cutout here. In the organizer for the game, you actually will have a large cardboard cutout, but you're gonna trim it down so it's only this little flap and this large straightaway. That way you can cover all of your Saga 2 expansion content in this upper section. So simply you'll just put your cover like so and all your Saga 2 is up there and you won't have to worry about it. You could just focus on your Saga 1 content. We'll put our sleeves up at the top here and then our encounter book and special ocean tile on the bottom. And lastly, our rulebook for Saga Expansion 1. The Saga Expansion 2 rulebook is at the very bottom of the box and you can switch them when you're ready. And that's everything for the Saga expansions. And one quick thing to note, when you are ready to implement the Saga expansion into your game, there's actually room in that core box for a lot of the content. A lot of the things will store flat and there will be room for the different advancements, tiles, etc. that you'll find in your experience. And that's organizing Dead Reckoning. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. How do you organize your copy of Dead Reckoning? Do you prefer the classic barrels or the upgraded ones? Do you prefer the ghost ship or the standard brown? We'd love to hear your opinions on not just the aesthetics, but the game as a whole. Do you like the card crafting system? Are you enjoying being a pirate? We'd love to hear what you think. But thank you so much for watching. Side Game Strong.